Good morning, YouTube. It has been a while. I have got a goodie for you today. It's been a little while since I said hi to you guys. I wanted to come by and say hello. I uh, hope you guys are having very happy holidays so far. It's been a bit. What I decided, I'm going to start bringing them back. Maybe not all the way at first, but we're going to start bringing them back. I, I, that's it. I, I, I've made my decision. So if you did love the intros, they're coming back. I hope you guys enjoyed this tier list of the experimental. Uh, it was a lot of fun to make the experimental, so hopefully you enjoyed my thoughts about it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 150k subs. I'd love to hit 150k subs before the end of the season. Hello? 150k subs before the end of the year. So if you like the video, like it, comment, share it with a friend. You know the deal. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you guys again later. Hopefully I don't get Andy in trouble. But Andy, Blizzard's community manager, uh, was talking in Emong's chat the other day that there's going to be a blog post in the night sometime soon about changes from the experimental that they actually want to keep. So I don't, I have no info. I know nothing about it, but a toned down version of Lucio looked like it might be a possibility. From what I interpreted, look like we're gonna be on the table as a possibility, which I think is really cool. And obviously things have to be more balanced, but you know, I hope that that being said though, I also wanted to make a tier list on who was the winners from this patch, who were the losers from this patch, who was really strong, who wasn't really strong, and where it would go from there. Number one, I will say it, I will admit it, I will say Reinhardt was extremely strong, and I will, I, I actually want to put a little caveat, a little star above it. Reinhardt was extremely strong, but actually, there were other contributing factors to why Reinhardt was the best pick. Because the other best pick, Winston, sorry, best main tank pick, Winston, absolutely got f***ing destroyed by this one. Reaper. The Reaper buffs were so crazy strong that it made Winston borderline unplayable. So the reason Ryan was so good was Ryan was the strong and dominant main tank that he once was, but didn't get shredded hard by Re by Win by Reaper because he could shield off, um, you know, the incoming damage from Reaper. Next, Moira. Moira went from absolutely the most F tier worst pick in the game to arguably the best support in the game. The cleanse ability was phenomenal. Um, it changed the impact and high intensity of the game to levels that I didn't think were possible. You know, like you have, like it just, it's a level of anti-CC unseen in the entire game of Overwatch. And is the idea of having an anti-CC or a cleansing CC a possibility of something we would want? I don't know. But if you're gonna talk about Moira, you have to talk about our frog, Lucio. Lucio was very, very strong um, with the changes because Lucio's changes was he built more, more ult charge with doing damage, which enabled really fragging power, displacement, doing damage Lucio, which was good, but also that beat. Now, when we faced Echo Flex's team in the tournament, his Ryan would counter pin me. Like you'd try to like just pin in, force the counter pin. And then Echo Flex would beat on, on me on the ground and would get a free kill on, on their main tank. It was genius. It was a free entry kill. And that added another level of dynamic to the game that hasn't ever, almost ever been seen before. Next up, we gotta talk about her, May. May was extremely strong. Her ice block drop. Okay. In the, in the, not the quarterfinals, the round before the quarterfinals, the team that we played against had a May that would shoot her left click at the ground, speed in, wall up, pop her ice block, and drop on people and get free frags. She was literally becoming a human anvil. And it was insane. They were actually winning fights, like, or not winning fights. They were getting picks and like kind of winning fights 
based off of that. And it was the first challenge we had had in the tournament. And the second we realized how to shut it down, we, we rolled them. But that was so strong that May was able to have an impact. She could literally solo kill tanks that weren't paying attention. Being a Looney Tunes anvil, yes. So May, I don't think May was insanely strong by herself, but with the meta and plus her changes, she was really good in this. And lastly, but not least, Diva. Diva was very, very strong. Um, her four second flight allowed her to not only fly into the back line and harass, but then also escape. Um, she could basically fly through the entire enemy team, boop every single person and fly out. The 100 melee actually was devastating. I actually died a few times in the tournament to 100 melees where I was like 130 HP and like, you know, taking damage or whatever. And she would just walk up or come down from the heavens, just go boop, just one tap. It was wild. But past that, I would say Winston was A tier. Winston got shut down by Reaper. But if Reaper wasn't as strong as he was, Winston would have been a literal menace. With Brig hard nerfed, Dive should have been the meta. But Reaper said nah. Not only Reaper, there was another another short friend. Um, but Winston overall felt really good. Winston felt good to play. The high damage versus our next one made it so that the... Uh, uh, survivability in Primal was so good. It was so good. Honestly, I would like to see Primal hit the, the live game, the Primal change, and the turret chain, or the deployable change, because that could actually kill off Double Shield, real talk. And we didn't get to see it during this because um, Double Shield uh, didn't really get played because I took away Sigma Shield and Arissa had a paper thin shield, so uh, they couldn't play it. But if it was played, I think Winston would have been pretty good. But our next one, our short friend, Torb, which again, I think Sanji went fucking wild with the changes on Torb. When he popped his E, basically had a machine gun uh, of a left click, and it was just bonkers how much damage it output. We actually thought it was S tier and the strongest until the finals, uh, just because the amount of raw damage it put out. Next up, Zarya. Zarya was exceptionally good because Zarya could actually boop herself with right click over the May wall. So if you were running Rhine Zarya over Rhine Diva, your Zarya could still bubble your Rhine if they got walled off, which is extremely high value. And the mobility that Zarya had is something that she'd never had before. Next up, Symmetra. Symmetra was actually pretty good. Symmetra had actually a lot of potential in a lot of places, uh, especially playing a lot of control. We Most teams only played control, hybrid, and escort if they got there. So they most of them only played control and hybrid so winning those control maps off of sim was really important and having the 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 speed boost off the tp and having an extra turret just made sim really good lastly i'd probably put tracer actually you know what i don't even know if i want to put tracer there i'm gonna put pharah pharah was actually low-key really good the reason pharah was so good was with a barrage chain, she just literally, she was an AC-130. She was unkillable. But the reason you couldn't play Farah that much, she, she very much fell to the same problem with Winston, is that you had to remove the Moira or Lucio to play Farah and basically the rest of your team. But Farah herself, though, was extremely powerful. Extremely powerful. So you got to give it some credit. Farah was very good. Actually, you know what? Before I go to B tier, Bap. BAP was really good. BAP was really good. Um, we actually were running BAP before we were running Moira at, for a little bit. Uh, just based off of Immortality. Immortality was still really good. BAP using his uh, his regenerative burst as a, uh, a, a countermeasure to flankers just made him just really strong. Um, realistic, you didn't play many flankers, though, uh, once you got into high-level games because it was rush, rush, rush. But that's why Moira was better. But I think BAP was really good. BAP was exceptionally good. B tier? I think you gotta start with Ana. Honestly, Ana could go either, either one. The nano change to herself isn't that useful in team play, um, but it's nice to have. But overall though, I mean, Ana already brought a lot of good pieces to her kit. Um, and plus, if Winston was meta, if Winston had run one out and been better than Ryan, I think that uh, 
Ana would have been probably played a bunch. Probably would have been played a bunch. So, I think Ana was pretty good. Just got overshadowed in the tournament. Next, I would probably put Tracer. Tracer getting the extra 50 bullets. Honestly, basically one clipping machine if you could do it right. But again, didn't really play that much Rush. I mean, Tracer doesn't really get played that much in Rush. But Tracer was extremely good against the teams that decided to play ball. Um, which was good. Sombra. Sombra. Sombra was really, really good. But the pre the reason you wouldn't play Sombra that often um, is when you're playing that high damage rush. High damage rush as opposed to poke and play abilities rush. Sombra isn't as good because you have to spend so much time. Like you spend up, you end up losing more fights. You win the alt fight, but then you lose the mid fights. And it's like it didn't really bring as much value. But Sombra, of course, was still really strong with her with her hack change and EMP obviously really good. And you know, we even we were even tried Sombra at one point to try to try to win a map, but didn't totally work out. Um but Sombra was still really good. Just not not to the same level as the other characters. Um what else? I'd say Doomfist. Doomfist was pretty good with his changes. Uh the Meteor Strike change is basically an insta-kill. Um Especially in Brawl, Doom can always be somewhat viable in Rush, somewhat. Uh, basically, you have an all-in style strat. You saw that um, Solaris did, did it to us at one map where they swapped Doom and just basically changed to an all-in style and played all aggressive. You know, it, it was Doom. Doom. Doom worked, but there was just there was just better options most of the time. But Doom would definitely definitely could work. Who next? I think you gotta throw Cassidy in there. Cassidy's stun still was really valuable. It kind of helped shut down those ball comps. Um, where you could play like the poke ball versus rush. Uh, I don't think it, you know, it was totally viable when they had the Cassidy still, even though with the increase on his stun, it still was very valuable and you could shut them down. Plus, I mean, I, if you guys saw, we kind of had some some nasty flash shatters where we were just blowing teams up. Um, having that stun will always keep cast somewhat, in, somewhat viable in meta. And then even in the tournament as well. Even if you don't get played in the later rounds, you got played early. I only, I think I'd put ball. Ball could be B tier. Ball originally was S tier, but that's because it, they the devs kind of broke it and wasn't what I intended. Uh, they made it like extremely like fast, and I was like, whoa, I wanted better handling, not acceleration. And so basically, we came to this middle ground where we tuned it down so that it was getting more handling and a slight bit of acceleration. I basically wanted Ball to be able to like turn on a dime and keep his fire going, um, but instead they had increased his acceleration. So basically, he was just a, a lightning fast pinball. And it made him almost impossible to shoot. But by tournament time, he was fixed and a little bit in a better spot. So Ball was still pretty good, but um, definitely not as strong as it was like day one. C tier. Uh, I would probably throw Widow in C tier. Um, Widow didn't have a whole lot of changes, but Widow's always still good. I mean, if you hit the headshots, especially on control, depending on like, you know, if you played Ilios Ruins. Widow brings some value. Jay played some Widow and ended up getting him some good picks. Uh, overall, though, not great. Just kind of like... was okay. Hanzo. Hanzo, I think, was pretty decent, but not very good. Hanzo was okay. You know? He was okay. Uh, his tank-busting power was way down, and Reaper had all the tank-busting power. But he didn't have his sniping ability, so like he was just kind of like a shell of him for himself. The Storm Arrow wasn't that good either, like... It wasn't actually like scatter arrow. It was literally just one storm arrow that would bounce around. That wasn't scatter arrow, so it was kind of you know a little wonky. Orissa, I would say, was really low key a sleeper. Um, Orissa was unbeatable in duels. Orissa is actually the duel master, but in high level play, Rush just kind of beat it, beat Orissa. Um, here's the thing. Rush being as good as it was caused other things to happen. So, like, Orissa could have been really, really good if Reaper wasn't a tank buster, as, as hard of a tank buster as he was, um, because Winston would have been played more. And if Winston was played more, you could play Poke versus Winston. You know what I mean? Like, there's, like, three or four changes that happen in a row um, that could have made it better. But unfortunately, you know, with Reaper being as strong as he was... Causing Moira and Lucy to be played with Rhyme, you know, it just kind of it forces everything to be um, played that way. So Arissa was Arissa was low key very good. 
but just not in this tournament, unfortunately. D tier. Bastion. Bastion actually low key was okay with the changes because he was so fucking tanky. But nobody played him. I only know this because we played against Bastion main and his team in the experimental like queue up randomly and we saw how good Bastion was in the hands of someone who knew how to play him. Um, but still it's Bastion. So like, uh, next up I'd probably put, uh, probably Brig. I'd probably put Brig next. Brig didn't get played almost at all. Uh, even though her changes actually, I think are really, really good. I think there's some tweaks to be made. Um, but our changes were really good. The reason Brig isn't good in this tournament though, on this experimental, is because Brig isn't good versus Rush. Now say it back with me, Brig isn't good versus Rush. So, when Brig wasn't good about a year ago, the reason everybody was playing Rush was because they had a bunch of other nerfs and changes. Brig hadn't really gotten any changes. She was still good, but she wasn't OP. And then Brig got buffed because she wasn't getting played. Brig was still good when she wasn't getting played, but she isn't good versus Rush. So, Brig is good on Dive and Poke, not versus Rush. Brig could be really good with these changes. She's tanky. She can still put out pretty good amounts of healing. Um, she brawls. But the biggest thing is, is the stun. Her being able to stun people that come in. Um, and the whip shot stun, you know? I don't actually, I think she lost her stun on this, but I'm saying, like, regardless overall, um, her having the stuns and tankiness is what makes Brig so good. Not being able to do everything on the planet. That's what makes Brig broken. I would probably put Sigma next. Sigma's changes were just funny. I think the suck running away would be actually insane. I, I think that he does probably need his shield still. He just wasn't as valuable without it. But I honestly don't know how to change Sigma, to be honest with you. He just can do so much. Junkrat. Junkrat definitely had value with his tire. Uh, COD code showed us in the tournament that he could do pretty well with Junk. Uh, but nothing scary. Just like, just the normal spam, holding angles, basically Team Deathmatch style that the ladder currently plays, the current, like, real ranked meta. Um, but in the tournament, didn't totally work. Uh, with more coordination, with Rush being meta, with with actual main tanks, not double off tanks slash boop DM fest, which is what, I, in my opinion, the worst stage of Overwatch ever. Um, but regardless, it was a little bit better. And lastly, I'll put Echo. Echo wasn't as strong as Pharah. I think Pharah was way better. Echo just was like kind of meh. But again, Echo isn't good when Rush is meta. Like if Rush and on the current live version, if Rush was meta. You probably wouldn't see that much echo. You just probably wouldn't. You still see her, but just not like every game. Just it just she just inherently falls out of meta if Rush is meta. And lastly, our F tier. Start with Zen. Um Discord Orb being weakened. Plus plus poke not being as good in this. Just made Zen pretty much dog. I think on the current patch, if you got rid of if you nerfed just Discord Orb. You would change the life of all these tank players without all of the giga buffs. But you have to remember, if this got big nerfed and this got big buffed, the gap widened so far that it was just poop. So, um, I don't think that I still think Zen is way too strong on live patch, but in the tournament, just wasn't very good. Ash number two, uh, you could have given Ash two guns. You could have given her twenty four bullets. Still would have been trash, because Ash is inherently bad without Mercy, and Mercy was bad um, because Poke was not good. Genji, remember when Genji could fly? Yeah, honestly, should have kept that because uh, the double jump thing didn't totally work and Genji's just kind of dog shit and Genji doesn't work in Rush and that barely even works in Dive nowadays. Um, so Genji was just poop. Hog, kind of nerfed that to the ground. Kept his one shot just for funsies, but I wanted to keep Hog as far away from here as possible just because I hate Hog. I think Hog is inadvertently the worst hero in the game um, for the health of the game other than Brig because he promotes selfish play, uh, promotes, um, you know, team deathmatchy style, doesn't help your teammates, isn't inadvertently a tank, isn't the tank role, it's high damage, high frag power, one-shot kills, 
and high durability, and I I, I just think it's terrible. I, I and plus, even if you shoot him, you get less ult charge, which is just dog. Like that was the one thing that made it punishing. Now Hog is. They gave Hog the old Aristimus treatment where they gave him a bunch of buffs because he wasn't meta. Hog wasn't meta because Double Shield was. Double Shield is a literal counter to Hog. When Double Shield went away as much or wasn't as strong, Hog immediately would become meta. That's literally how it worked. It's the same thing happened to Arissa. Arissa got 19 buffs back in Goats, and then Goats was taken out by 222, and Arissa was hard meta for two years. Like, it's very easy to understand. Soldier. Uh, Soldier just isn't good in Rush isn't really good in 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 anything other than poke um and even at that point isn't that great so soldiers just kind of didn't do well and lastly mercy i think the mercy changes are a good idea but mercy was like let's be honest with ourselves mercy was gutted in the in, in this gutted like like she was just terrible like her healing was so low like if you maybe you buffed her healing even higher made it like 80 hps and then had a low floor of like 40 and you had to like be careful and like you had to, you had a really high and a really low like you could have like like a second or two of 80 healing that would be crazy but if you heal bought it it went all the way down to 40 or 30 and so you had a reason to like really pay attention to the bar that would be sick but keeping it from 55 to 45 or whatever it was it's it's such a dog little change like you literally just kind of just take away mercy's even like one thing she can do other than damage boosting and so she's just a damage boost bot at that point. And it's just, it just kind of is. So maybe you make it high, high risk, high reward, high skill ceiling. You know, you can really open that up more. But where it currently was, it's just, that was not it. So Mercy was absolutely awful. But this is my power rankings for the tournament experimental patch. And how strong they were both in the in the meta of the tournament and a little bit of the experimental just like the normal queue so that's my list